Hey guys, currently it is 1.19 a.m. and I decided to start making a video for some reason. I should be going to bed, but let's get started. So today I'm going to talk about my top 10 products that I use every single day. These are in my everyday carry and my life would be a lot worse if these products didn't exist. For those of you who don't know, I really love products. I've actually thought about becoming a product designer. Every time I go into any store, no matter what it is, Brookstone, CVS, I always look at the toys and gadgets section. I love my gadgets. So I'm very picky when it comes to my gadgets because I have background in computer science and I know a little bit about engineering. I've made a couple of designs in Fusion 360. So whenever I look at a product, I'm like, that's annoying. I don't like this gadget. But anyways, these are the top 10 gadgets that I use personally as a college student at UC Santa Cruz, as you can see right there. So let's get into the list. The first item we have on the list is this thing, actually. We're going to go over this. So this is the Rocketbook Mini. So for those of you who don't know, Rocketbook is a company that makes reusable notebooks. And although it may sound like a little bit of a gimmick, there's a lot of smart notebooks out there that are really expensive. Rocketbooks are actually relatively cheap. I know that they're going to be a lot more expensive than normal notebooks, but over time, this will pay itself because you don't have to end up buying new notebooks every single time. So how they work, they use a pilot erasable pen and you can essentially write whatever you want on it. And when you want to save it, you scan it with the phone with the app and a QR code, it'll do some little magic thing and it will automatically send it to whatever drive folder you want. So this is really great if you love sketching diagrams, you like taking handwritten notes, but you feel like it's bad for the environment. These are really good because they don't waste any more paper that you currently use. The only environmental impact they have is you have to buy those little pen refills every time you run out of ink. But that's still a lot better than buying a whole notebook. So the reason why I love the Rocketbook Mini the most is I actually own all three sizes of Rocketbook. I have the letter size, I have the executive size, and I have the mini size. But the mini size is the only version I've actually brought with me in college. I left the other two back, not in Santa Cruz, because I don't use those that often. So this one I always have on me in my jacket pocket because I feel like whenever I have creative thoughts where I want to write something down, it's a lot more... It feels a lot better to write it on a piece of pen and paper than to type it into your phone. And it's really hard to explain, but I agree. I feel like a lot of writers will agree with me on this one. In fact, actually, that's how I wrote down the top 10 list on this notebook. It's actually how I started it off. So yeah. I also bought this little pen holder thing off of Amazon. Rocketbook does sell an official one, but it's pretty expensive. So if you want a cheap one, you can just buy these on Amazon. You just put the pen right there. You put this in your jacket pocket. All of your creative writing gears are right there, ready to go. And I feel like the two best parts about this gadget is that it's first, it's great, it's reusable. Once you buy it once, you don't have to buy another one. And my second favorite thing is how you can scan it and it goes directly to the drive. The app works pretty well and your notes are saved to the drive automatically, which is really great. Now, of course, as I said in the beginning of this video, I love nitpicking gadgets. So I'm gonna go all over all of the cons. I don't have too many cons right now, but sometimes the app does crash or I've had issues where I had to delete the app and reinstall it. It's just slightly annoying when I'm in a rush. So sometimes I end up just using the camera app to take photos of the notebook, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a smart notebook. You can take pictures of any notebook. And the second thing I don't really like is how it scratches really easy. I haven't had this rocket book for a long time, but if you look closely, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. There's a lot of scratches on the front and back because the material they used is uh it's not very matte plastic it's like in between matte and glossy so you put this thing in your pocket once it's gonna scratch a lot so that's just more of a kind of cosmetic thing but if that's one thing you really don't like don't get this notebook and the third con i wish they sewed these with lines on them because i'm really bad at following drawing str writing straight so i wish they sold one with lines there's some little dots so these are dotted line pages but the issue is these do have dollar lines. They have these little dots you can help write in a straight line, but they're very faint and it's really hard to see. Like, I don't even think the camera can pick them up. Now, the second product I want to go over is something that you probably... Whoops. Oh, crap. I spilled water on my GoPro. Wait, why am I worrying about spilling water on my GoPro? Anyways, the second product that I would like to go over is hooks. You can see in the background of this video, I use a lot of hooks because dormitories are really small, at least in UC Santa Cruz. I don't know how big dormitories are in other colleges and universities, but this, this general mantra that university dorms are very small. So how do you maximize the space? 
the easiest way to maximize space in a small dormitory is to hang everything, you know? Right here, you can see I hang all my masks, I hang uh, my umbrella over here. I hang this little hand sanitizer bottle, my ukuleles hung over there in that little corner. My guitar is right there, that's not really hung. My camera bag is hanging on the ladder for my dorm. Basically, wall space is amazing. Because a lot of people, they try to add little cabinets and things in their drawers, but they always forget about how much wall space they have. And I don't really need to go too much about this gadget. So these ones I bought are from Command. They, the issue with these little hooks is that they're really expensive for just being pieces of plastic. But I found that Command hooks are the only hooks that I've been able to take off walls without any damage. So, of course, you don't want to cause damage to your university dorm. You may get charged for that. So, this gadget is pretty easy. Get a hook to hold your stuff. I know I have a lot of masks here, but trust me, I use hooks a lot. I'm a big fan of hooks. Not hookers. Jesus. Okay, now the third gadget is again going to be located in this corner and it's going to be a little bit weird. I'm not sure a lot of people would agree that this is a really good gadget, but it's these little mass straps. So I am very picky about a lot of things and when I wear normal masks, this may sound like a really small nitpick, but my ears get tired a lot. And they do sell these plastic mask savers. I've actually 3D printed some a couple years ago, not a couple years ago, a couple months ago. But I found that these were always a pain to carry around, it would sometimes snap and when you put your mask in your pocket or something, you would still have to carry that little plastic thing. So I found that these straps are pretty perfect because you can just leave them on your neck like that and you can just forget that you're even using a mask. For example, you're going to biking to class or you're taking a jog outside, you won't ever misplace your mask. And the thing is, if you put your mask in your pocket, it kind of makes it dirty, you know, there's lint in your pocket, you don't want to be breathing that in. So this is a great place to keep it. But the main reason why I put this on the list is for you guys who get tired ears, where your ears get really tired easily. Because the cool thing is, when I put on this mask, if you notice, I actually strap it onto my head. And yeah, it does look kind of ridiculous, but it's also a great conversation starter. So I've had uh, at least 20 people that I know talk about this little thing that rests on my head and it's kind of funny but the main advantage is you can see behind my ears there's absolutely nothing now this won't work for every mask there's some masks that this little strap works better than for others but with the standard surgical masks these work perfectly as well so yeah these are great i use these every day so of course i gotta put on my gadget list i know it's not very it's a very weird gadget to put on a gadget list but if i use it every day it counts as a gadget the fourth item on the list my wallet so I actually had a really nice extra wallet a while back. I even did a video review on the extra wallet. So if you want to check out that review, look in the description, it would really help me out. Um, but the issue is I lost the wallet. Ironically, the extra wallet is supposed to be a wallet you don't lose because it has a tracking device in it. But I'm like, I don't need that tracking device. I'm never going to lose my wallet. Literally the first two months I was on campus, I lost my wallet. I still don't know where it is to this day. I feel like this, there's just so many trees, it's probably just on one of the stumps on the trees, maybe a banana slug is going over or something. But now, this is the wallet that I use. So this wallet actually goes on the back of your cell phone. And you can fit up to, careful not to show my credit card numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. I currently hold six cards in this little MagSafe wallet. And the thing is, with the official Apple wallets, they only hold like two or three cards, which I find not very useful. This one can hold six. Obviously, it's not going to hold six in one go. I'd recommend putting in three first. And then there's this little elastic thing that will stretch out over time. And it's not supposed to be able to hold six cards, but it does. And it's really cool because I'm going to take my phone right here. Just like that. You see that? And it's pretty stable. I haven't had any issues with it with, with it falling off when I didn't want it to. And there, you can see yourself in the video. And the cool thing about this video, I mean, this MagSafe stand is that you can turn it into a stand, which is really useful. So whenever I'm watching YouTube videos or I'm recording my TikToks or anything, I can just put my phone like that and it becomes a little tripod thing. So my phone always has a tripod on it. And yeah, this product is just really cool. It's really well designed. I find it personally better than the Apple wallet, the official Apple wallet. So yeah. This thing's pretty great. I'll put a link to this in the review. I mean, I'll put a link to all my products, obviously, because what's the point of a gadget review if you can't buy the gadgets? But yeah, this is probably one of my favorite products. I don't really have any complaints about it. The durability is still pretty good. There are some loose seams here and there, but overall, considering how rough I treat my wallets, this is great. Okay, the 
fifth item. The fifth item. Prestige playing cards. So if you don't know already from the name of my channel, Tony Cool Magic and More, I'm a magician and I love playing cards. But the issue with playing cards is I go through them really quickly. I shuffle them, I let spectators sign them, I do stupid stuff with them, and every single two weeks I have to get a new pack of cards because they wear out, they don't shuffle as smoothly, and they get dirty. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have that issue too, especially when you're in Santa Cruz and there's a lot of water and swimming and oceans, you're gonna get your cards wet. And when your cards are wet, you can't play cards with them. But now you can with bicycle prestige playing cards. Now I just gotta say, this box is really bougie. I know it's still a cheap paper box, but it feels really nice and I just love the packaging of it. So if you take these cards out, you will see that they look just like ordinary bicycle cards. But the trick is that these cards are actually not made out of paper. They're made out of plastic, which means they're waterproof. If they ever, if you spill your soda or something, you can just take some water and wipe it off. And the cool thing is this, I've used a lot of plastic cards in the past. For example, here's another pack of plastic cards. But the thing about these plastic cards is that they feel almost identical to normal paper playing cards. At least this is the closest that I've been able to ever feel. Let's look at that. And of course, they're not going to be as smooth as a fresh new pack of bicycle cards because those are air cushioned. But this is a lot better than an old pack. So this is kind of like, how would I describe the feel? The feel of these cards is between a new pack of bicycle cards, you can imagine that over here, and you can imagine a really old pack of bicycle cards, and the feel is right in the middle. But the advantage of these plastic cards is that they will always feel that way. They will always feel consistent. And for you magic geeks out there as well, this deck is really easy for pharaoh shuffling. Like, literally, I just did a perfect one right there. Obviously, I didn't split the deck 50-50 because I'm lazy, but the Pharaoh Shuffles on this deck are amazing. Like, I have never been able to do better Pharaoh Shuffles than with this plastic cards. And of course, these are really durable. These are really nice. The only issue I have with these cards is that they do chip sometimes. Like, let's see. This card, you can see it is chipped, but this came chipped. But I was able to contact Bicycle and they gave me a new pack of cards. So, I still have that sealed because I love these cards so much. But yeah. Not really exactly a gadget, but considering I have these on me, I count them as a gadget. And yeah, if you guys love playing cards and you guys just want one pack of playing cards, you don't want to buy new ones every time you get them wet or something, these are the way to go. They're a lot more expensive than normal ones, but you're going to be using these for the rest of your life. So I would highly recommend these. Okay, next one. The next item we have is storage computers. I am a computer scientist major and a video editor, so you know, what always happens, I always run out of space. I'm out, always out of space on my iCloud. I'm almost out of space on my Google Drive. Actually, my Google Drive is unlimited. I'm talking about my personal account, but if my school account had a limitation on Google Drive, bam, I would have been out of Google Drive storage on day one. So how do you deal with this? I have a computer, the Surface Book Pro 3. It's a pretty great computer. The only issue is it only has 250 gigs of space, which is really small. So that's why I always have this thing on my computer. It's a little SanDisk one terabyte drive and everyone loves these drives. These are amazing. And the cool thing is what I've done is you can place a piece of Velcro on the back of it. You can take your laptop right over here and then you can just stick it on like that. And if you don't want the wire in the way, you can just stick it on the other way. And that's pretty amazing. I basically turned this computer into a one terabyte computer for only 150 bucks compared to the extra 500 to $700 I would have to pay for internal storage. And there's not much to say about it. It's a one terabyte drive, it's really fast, and it's expensive on Amazon, but it's cheaper at Costco. So if you're ever running out of computer space, this is the best way to go. I would highly recommend sticking it on the back of your computer. And sometimes I even forget it's there. It's really great, honestly. I have almost no complaints about it. The only com actually no, I do have one complaint about it. One complaint is that this side, one of the sand dice, it's very smooth, it's very matte, and it feels really nice. But the issue with this side is that you cannot stick Velcro on it. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Like that's why I had to put it on this side because this side is more plasticky. But that's not really sand dice's fault. They're not designed to put Velcro on it, but that's just a side thing. Next item is not gonna be any specific brand, but it's one product I use every day: earplugs and eye masks. I live in a triple, so obviously people people make sound, people breathe, people snore. So get yourself a pack of earplugs. These are CVS earplugs. These are probably the best earplugs I've ever used. I would recommend using disposable ones instead of the ones that you use over and over again. I also have those, but I save those for my ocarina practices. The reason why I recommend 
the disposable ones is that they can often block noise better and they're more comfortable during sleep because the reusable ones they often are harder and if you lay on your side it kind of hurts your eardrum and these are pretty good they hold they clear up to 32 decibels as you can see right here and also for hygiene purposes it's easier just to throw away disposable ones and for some reason every time i wake up i lose my ears plugs i don't know if that's normal so that's why i get these disposable ones because every time i wake up they're like wait where my earplugs go i don't know where they went okay so yeah get yourself a good pair of earplugs just go to cvs get these little orange ones these these are these are literally amazing i these are great okay next one is going to be a little interesting it's my car my clock my clock it is 1 36 a.m i should go to sleep soon. anyways this clock is from ihome and again this is an expensive product on amazon and everywhere else but it's really cheap at costco and that's why i bought it and you can kind of see a trend here a lot of these things that i own i bought from costco you may be asking why do you need an alarm clock your phone can do that yes but your phone is also a really easy way to lose attention i know you should Everyone should generate self-discipline and stuff, but sometimes it's really easy just to open up your phone, you open up the clock app, next thing you know, you're scrolling on TikTok for the next hour. So for those times I just turn off my phone to focus on my work, this alarm clock is great. It's also, it's just really convenient, it's really nice. I can just put my AirPods on it, bam, starts charging. My phone starts charging. Even has an extra USB port if you need to plug in things, and it's never failed me. And the cool thing is, even when the alarm clock it runs out of power, it has a backup alarm system. So it will still ring alarms, you still won't show up late to class. And of course, I have a little bit of anxiety of sometimes I feel like my alarm clock doesn't working. So when I wake up every morning, I actually have two alarm clocks. I have one on my phone and one on my clock. Because the chances of both of them failing is less than one of them failing. Yeah, it's pretty simple. You can just tap top of it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move my camera to show you guys what it looks like. One, two, three. Okay, so you can see this is the alarm clock. I'm gonna move my table tennis stuff. We go. We have some videos on table tennis on this channel if you're interested, but that's not the point. See, this is the alarm clock. You can see you can change the brightness by tapping right here. It's really cool. It's very dim right now, but yeah, you can just change the brightness by tapping that. And to make the alarm, you just click on this side button. Bam, I have an alarm set for 10 a.m., super easy. And if you need to change the alarm, you just hold the button and you change it to whatever time you need to wake up. Let's say you have an 8 a.m. lecture, you can change it to 7 p.m. or something, I don't know. But it's super easy. And you can change it to five day or seven day or two day, even two day alarms if you just need to wake up early on the weekends for your workday shift. And it's great. I have literally no complaints about this alarm clock. I, the only thing I wish, actually no, I have one complaint. I wish the little cable to power this alarm clock was a little bit longer. But other than that, it's a really well-made device you're paying a premium for it but it's actually a very reasonable price at costco so yeah next product the next product that i have is the one i was actually using for this entire video it's this camera i'm using so the camera that i'm using is the dji pocket 2 and you may be asking why are you using a dji pocket 2 you have a sony camera you have a dslr mirrorless camera why don't you use that well the thing is sometimes the best camera is not the one that shoots the best quality, it's the one that you always have on you. And I'm not always going to carry my mirrorless camera with my really big lens all around. I know mirrorless cameras are still a lot smaller than other cameras, but still, that's still a pretty big thing to bring around all the time. And you want to get worried about damaging it or like someone stealing it or something. But this DJI Pocket, it literally fits into the size of this, which is really great. And the cool thing is this even includes a wide angle lens inside of the case. This case is designed very well. Actually, there's one issue. I'll get back into that issue later. And I just feel like for creators or content creators who always need something on them to shoot that video, the DJI Pocket is perfect because it even has, it's like an all-in-one system. Yeah, it doesn't shoot great video and the sensor on the DJI Pocket 2 is pretty much the same as your phone sensor. In fact, your phone probably shoots better video than the DJI Pocket 2. But the advantage of the DJI Pocket 2 is it's an all-in-one system. You see this microphone? You just turn on the DJI, you start recording, this microphone automatically connects. You don't have to worry about anything. It just starts recording and it works pretty much perfectly. I haven't had any complaints with it so far. And it's just interesting. It's just so many features. You can do crazy gimbal shots. You can get really stable footage. You can even tap your face and it'll track you around when you move around the room. It's just it's an amazing piece of technology. And it's encouraged me to make more and more YouTube videos. And at the end, I'm willing to pay money to get, give myself more motivation because I'm one lazy mother anyways. Um, yeah. So if you are looking to get into content creating and you don't really care about getting the best picture or image quality, 
DJI Pocket 2, best one for you because I have missed a lot of shots when I didn't have my camera on me and now that will never happen again. Tenth item on this list is actually, it comes, if you've watched my channel before, this is absolutely no surprise, is the Jetson Boat Pro. The Jetson Boat Pro is, I don't know how it's so cheap. It's an electric bike for $300. If you look at the prices of bicycles, it's pretty much the same price as any other bicycle you can buy now. In fact, most bicycles are more than $300 if you want disc brakes. And if, if you're in the Santa Cruz Hills, I would highly recommend getting disc brakes. But I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a bike for 300, it's an electric bicycle for $300. I, I still don't understand how it's so well priced. If you guys want a full comprehensive review on the Jetson Pro, I'm not gonna go that, I'm not gonna do that in this video because I already made that video. I actually made three videos on the Jetson Pro. One of them was an overall review on how to fix small issues. The second one was a speed hack. So you can actually get the Jetson Pro to go up to 19 miles per hour, which is insane for $300. And the third one is a pack to make the battery removal because you know, I'm in this dorm, it's small. There's three flights of stairs, there's no elevator. I don't wanna bring up that bike up and put it in this room. So those are my three videos. So check them out in the description if you want to know more. It's just, I don't know. I use that every single day to get to class or go anywhere. The thing is, I even have access to a car and I prefer to use the Jetson Bull Pro because we don't have parking lots at UCSC. There's only two parking lots you can really park at and your classes are not near those parking lots. So a car doesn't really help you go to class. It mainly just gets you on campus, but yeah. I don't know, I really like that Jetson Boat Pro. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It's a little bit different than the past videos I've been doing. Normally I write a script, I narrate it, I find B-roll, I put it together, but this one's kind of just ad-libbed. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. So if you like this style of video, let me know. If you hate this style of video, also let me know in the comments so I don't make any of these more videos because I'm still a very new channel. Actually no, this channel is actually pretty old. It's been 10 years, I think. I'm not exactly sure when I made this channel, but um, I haven't been very successful to be honest, but that's also because I haven't been uploading. But yeah, um, there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment.